this shit is literally called basic hard seltzer. <laughs> so, Megan, if you listen to this episode, you. I owe you one basic hard seltzer. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, are we yeah, going? You, is yeah, everyone you, good? Mm-hmm. Liam's drinks are doing owns of okay. him, but yes, we're going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's all. That's not lemon. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, <laughs> hello, and welcome to Well, There's Your Problem, a podcast about engineering disasters, and it has slides. Um, yes. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the it person who's like talking bread. right now. <laughs> Justin, uh, what's your pronouns? Oh, my pronouns are he and him. Right? Disgusting. Yeah, I got Shameful. I forgot, I forgot <laughs> about right. pronouns. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns, she and her. Liam. Yay, Liam. Uh, hi, I'm Liam Anderson. I'm your least favorite third of this podcast. Uh, <laughs> today I'm going to be your least favorite fifth of this podcast, doing myself no favors. Uh, I've already started drinking, and my pronouns are he and him, and I hate you. Nice. <laughs> nice. And, and, and we have guests today. Hello, guests. Hello, Hello guests. Man. Hey, what's how's that? it going? Hey, I'm, I'm Michael Nicholas. Pronouns he, him. Uh, Kevin Rogan, he, they. And, and <laughs> why are you two here? What are you doing here? Why are you on the podcast? <laughs> <now>? <laughs> Get off <laughs> my property. <laughs> <laughs> because we make jokes about buildings on the internet. Yeah. And that, yeah. It's a noble profession. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That, that's the, nobody's ever said that before actually well I, <laughs> nobody building, ever buildings again. are an unending source of humor people don't realize that architecture can be funny mm. um <laughs> <laughs> which is what, what we're here to talk about we're going to talk about the funniest architect of them all who doesn't <laughs> even consider himself an architect uh and i thought we'd start with this quote from Fa- a fast company article uh this is from december 18th 2018 uh At a recent symposium featuring the renowned architects Michael Graves and Peter Eisenman, uh, talk turns to fellow architect Santiago Calatrava. Cala fucking Trava. What a waste, (laughs) says Graves. (laughs) A founding father of postmodernism and the man who brought high design to Target. Then he does his best Calatrava impression. I will make wings for you and this subway station will cost $4 billion. (laughs) That's the best thing Michael Grace have ever done. <laughs> by far, by yeah. far. Eisenman, best known for the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin, chimes in. When Calatrava came to Yale, he got up after a long introduction. He said, I'm going to draw. He had a camera over a drawing board. He turned on music and he drew for a whole hour. He then turned the music off and walked <laughs> off stage. <laughs> okay, oh, that, that rules. That, that rules. genuinely rules. <laughs> Actually, this reminds me of a thing that Zizek did once, which is uh, he got cut off during a, uh, a lecture uh, for questions, and he said, "All right, fine, I'll ask the first one, Professor Zizek. What would you say if you had more time?" And then he went on lecturing. <laughs> <laughs> I do, like the, I do like the idea of like buying a Porsche. It's like, yo, it was made fun of Ludacris for appearing on Justin Bieber's hit single, Baby. Uh, and then uh, he, he cried in his new Ferrari after we were done making fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yes, today we're going to talk about the life and works of Santiago Calatrava, uh, an architect famous for doing three or four different things, uh, one of which is going over budget. Um, All of which are intolerable. Jesus yes. Christ. Mm. But first, we have to do the goddamn news. Uh, so, so the oh, yeah, car we hole. got owned, right? Yeah, we, we, yeah, owned. we, we made it real. real. He made it yeah. real. It's not just in Vizsim anymore. No, no. It, it, it's a re- the car hole is here. Elon Musk is. <laughs> So what happens if you hole. have to open up the doors? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what it. What if I have to escape through the roof? Don't worry Don't about worry it. About it. Uh, I kind of feel like I should. What if no. I want to record a TikTok? Uh, you, you will be you will be killed by the car hole's own private police department. Oh, mm. good. I have one <laughs> I, more reason to hate Kylie Jenner or Kendall <laughs> or whichever Jenner. Would the, would the car hole would it would it qualify for having railroad police? Oh, that's a good question. Where's the rail, Roz? Well, well it's, I mean, it's, it's on a fixed, it's, fixed, it's on a it's, permanent it's a fixed way. Guideway, yeah, yeah. 
Hmm, I don't know. E- either way, though, it does have RGB lighting, which means it's a gamer hole. It is a gamer car yeah. hole. It's a gamer hole. Elon Musk has made has made us a gamer hole, and we should all be grateful to him for having gifted us with the 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 the, the bounty of his munificence. You know, that's what I usually say when I try to pe- when I want to try pegging tail. But uh... <laughs> yeah, it's the gamer hole. I've been very interested because apparently a lot of um a lot of they're paying the drivers seventeen dollars an hour apparently, hmm. but they've been having a hard time finding them because no one can figure out no one can do the safety procedures right. I guess because they're that <laughs> there complicated. There are safety procedures. There are apparently, uh, best as I can tell, if there's like a car disabled in the car hole, mm. um, everyone who's stuck behind the disabled car has to back out of the hole. <laughs> I Very see. quickly. Literal fucking genius. Yeah. I see no and, problems here. I no, it's it's fine, right? It's fine. Go back to the, the channel tunnel fire episode for an example of why when stuff's on fire in a tunnel, you can just just cool. Yeah, or the or the one the King's Crossfire. Yeah. Tunnel fires tunnel fires they're nothing to worry about. No, they're fine. Especially not when you have a these uh the, the Tesla, you know, being as it is a uh, trick candle um, mm. car and yeah. reignites after you put the fire out. <laughs> I, I'm just amazed that they've gotten this far. Um, I don't think they're going to get much far. I mean, it's, it's when 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 the thing opens proper, that's when we're going to see sparks fly. Um, <laughs> yeah, special bonus episode hastily recorded. Well, I'm I'm going to be mm-hmm. stoked. I'm going to be so I'm going to be so stoked. I want to see and that that guy on Twitter who keeps saying we're idiots for thinking this is a dumb idea. I'm We're idiots for a lot of other reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those, those things aren't related, and they aren't related to Elon Musk doing towering inferno, but underground. I always like when people are just like, uh, "Don't listen to these chuckle fucks." And I'm like, "Dude, are you? Because you shouldn't be." <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy who came onto the the Twitch stream for Trash Future the other day to like yell about how we're not going to start the revolution, and it's like, if you thought that a podcast was going to do that. If we thought that a podcast was going to do that, I, oh, I don't know. Man. I think we, you know, that, that's that's for um, that's for uh, the Maoist Rebel News guys to do. Yeah, um, yeah. If there's if there job. is one podcast that's going to start the revolution in in the Imperial Court, and it's called Red Scare. Everything else, <laughs> famously, it'll be Red Scare. Yeah. Yes. One of these drivers could start the revolution if he just stops his car. <laughs> yeah, you get enough people in there. Yeah, no more. I think that might be. I think it might be stopping the revolution of the uh, wheels. Yeah. yeah, I was just like, he's not going to go for a joke that cheap, is he? And then he you didn't let me down. Not. You didn't let me down. <laughs> All right, I I only had one news today because we're pressed for time. I right. okay. So I thought I thought we'd start by asking what what is a star architect. It's an architect that I've heard of. <laughs> yeah, I, yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, that's basically it. Yeah, because I, I, I take absolutely no interest in architecture or architects, so it's an architect that I can name. Yeah, and that's it. Fr- yeah. Fucking Frank Lloyd Wright, Le Corbusier, yeah. um, Frank yeah. Furness? Uh, no, Goldfinger. I don't think Frank <laughs> Furness was a star. Oh, uh, well, I know him. Yeah, well, that's because you live in Philly. Uh, yeah. the, 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 like, the, the guy with the super Finnish name, uh, like Eko Saarinen or something, that guy. Eero Saarinen. Eero Saarinen, yeah. And that, that guy. Well, uh-huh. You should get one of these guys to build something in Philly, put you on the map. Oh, mm. actually, yeah, we did. Um, but I thought, <laughs> here's, some, here's some examples. So here's Frank Gehry. We all know Frank Gehry, because he designed stuff that, like, Looks like a crumpled ball of tinfoil. Yeah, because yeah, he designed stuff right. wrong. And then we have like uh, I got here Rem Coolhouse, who became a star t- a star architect because of his name. Yeah, the inventor <laughs> of the cool house. The inventor of the cool house. Yeah. Yeah, the Bauhaus, the cool house, uh, the cool house. Yeah. Uh, down here is Bork Ingalls, um, <laughs> <laughs> famous for collaborating with uh, Bolsonaro. Um, <laughs> Also, he did this building down in the Navy Yard that looks like, uh, you know, it's it's sort of bending inwards, which I guess is cool. Who was the guy who did all of Brasilia? 
now that we're th- talking about Brazilian dudes, um, that's oh, a good fuck. question. The how super modernist one that gets gonna bug me if I don't think about it. He designed all of the like uh, Oscar Niemeyer. Board. Oscar Niemeyer, thank you. Yeah, um, he he was uh, also famous for his uh, wieners. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, the constitutional course of Brazil shaped like a wienermobile. <laughs> but it's all in very nice, like, white mm-hmm. concrete, and they power wash it religiously, so it's fine. Oh, I wish I was an Oscar Niemeyer wiener. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't wish that. It's not yeah. going to get any better for the rest of this episode, guys. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. Uh, yeah. So... Uh, it's architect is just like it's a guy he, he gets uh, he's disproportionately famous you know maybe for a particular building style or rem cool house you know he wrote all those books that people like to buy mm. um to the extent that i own them yes you uh, do <laughs> yeah i, I, do. I, I wanted I, to toss you under the bus if you weren't gonna you, toss you, yourself you have to yeah. like exclusively wear black and gray yes um, but he has very thin eyeglasses yeah you have very yeah. thin eyeglasses that's another one I um, only ever see you in black turtlenecks talking about the necessity <laughs> of, of beauty or whatever stupid thing. Um, so that, that's like the concept of the star architect. It's a famous architect. Mm. <laughs> so, so I, I have these kind of like about... tremendously overbuilt buildings. Yeah. Well, you don't, you don't get this reputation by building cheap buildings. No, or like unobtrusive <laughs> right. buildings that fit naturally into the social fabric. You want a statement building to be yeah, a star architect. Definitely not like, uh, you're not going to get famous by being like a reasonable, easy to work with person. <laughs> Except no, you're going to be throwing empty bottles of bourbon at interns' heads. Mm. <laughs> you also have to work with and for like uh, local despots. That's a big deal. Like, yes. y- you have to work for whichever Saudi fail son has the money to like decide that they want an airport in the middle of nowhere and they want it to look like a kind of a like wavy scrotum texture. <laughs> so, so I thought we'd. Uh, but today's episode, we're focusing on one star architect, which is ironic because he doesn't really even consider himself an architect. Mm. Santiago Calatrava. Seen here. Looking, looking, looking cool, looking good. Yeah, here he is doing some gestures. Um, here he is gesturing at a paper model he got paid 15 million euros for. Um, <laughs> I mean, nice work if you can get it. I was about to say, yeah. Uh, owns, uh, seemingly owns one tie. <laughs> <laughs> you only need the one, really. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Well, maybe he's like a cartoon character, he owns, only owns one outfit. I also mm. do like that he got his glasses from the three ninety nine rack at the local Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he lives in New York. It'd be a Dwayne Reed. Ugh, don't talk to me about New York. <laughs> I go to Walgreens. <laughs> Thank you. I go to Thank CVS. You. I prefer CVS. All right, so I guess we'll briefly go over his life. He was born in 1951 in Valencia in Spain. He went to architecture school in Valencia. Then after that, he's like, fuck this architecture shit, and he became a structural engineer. He studied in Zurich, and he got a PhD in no, structural he's, engineering. He's one of us. He could have started a podcast. <laughs> no, he, he, he got a PhD. That makes you too smart to start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have to call him Dr. Calatrava? I guess we do have to call him Dr. Oh, Calatrava. Yeah, Fuck. He is. <laughs> <laughs> Do- Dr. Calatrava, P-E-A-I-A. Yeah. <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> Probably F A I A. Um uh and, and this is fun because you know he has like the zealotry of the convert when it comes to you know structural engineering. Mm. He like resolves to like reject all of his knowledge of architecture. I'm gonna think about the pure structure of crap, right? Um and he Ugh. starts his like practice and really quickly falls into a sort of niche, right? He builds bridges and he builds train stations. Those are like his two big things. And he does it all with public money. Yeah. Um, and they all have to look like fucked up bird bones. Yes. <laughs> or bionicles. Or bionicles. They do, do kind of look like bionicles, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dr. Santiago Calatrava, inventor of bionicle. Yeah. 
That was, uh, well, maybe the Lego company went to him for inspiration, but, you know, Lego has like cost control, so they couldn't actually. Bionicle was always get a little involved. extravagant for them One anyway. 20 minute cold consulting session. Yeah. That'll be 40 million euro, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, I thought we'd start with the bridges. He, he has two kinds. Mm-hmm. There's two genders of Santiago Calatrava bridges. <laughs> now, you may notice if you live in a city near water or that has water in it, uh, if you don't have a Calatrava bridge, you have one or several imitation Calatrava bridges. Glasgow Actually, yeah. is lousy with these things. And it's just like, yeah, no, because that's, that's what a modern bridge looks like. And it's like, there's no reason for you to have done it this way. Are they all pedestrian bridges? Or mm, they, to my knowledge. Well, at least the, the ones here are, yeah. Okay. Uh, he's I done, feel like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, he's done it, a few mm. non pedestrian bridges. Right. Actually, more than a few of them. But yeah, the, the Calatrava esque pedestrian bridge, I guess, is one of the cheaper things you can do. I mean, <laughs> Well, they were even trying to put one up in Philly a while back. It's a moneymaker. Um, it's an instant moneymaker. Mm. It gives you a bit of a skyline if you don't have a skyline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The two genders of bridges he constructs are offset uh, um, cable stay uh, bridge and offset tied arch bridge. Right? Yeah, because fuck symmetry. Exactly. Right. Symmetry is bad. That's that's what you learn in structural engineering school, right? That's not what I learned from Bioshock. <laughs> I, I, I think what this guy learned in structural engineering school was just the shapes on every engineering textbook cover. <laughs> I, I yeah, actually... these are moment diagrams, and that's it. He just, <laughs> he just plastered it into real life, I guess. Yeah, if you or just to the uh, tune of like fifty million dollars. Mm. If you just take the graph in the book and build it in real life, that's what we're doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? Just badly misunderstood the captions on every illustration. <laughs> yes. So, so his first his first bridge, his first project that really puts him in makes the architectural press interested in him is called the Pont de Bac de Roda. It, it's in Barcelona, it. right? Yes. <laughs> So, like the the Barcelona City Fathers were preparing for the 1992 Olympics, and they wanted you know some cool signature projects, right? We want we want stuff that looks cool. Practicality is a secondary concern. I love mm. the Olympics, man. Yeah, you, yeah, you have a good reason to like, but, like move every poor person 50 miles out of your city, but well, also I do build how shameless they always are yeah. about it. Just like ah, yes, and, and this is where we put the poverty disposal unit. Yeah, we, we, we've, just given, like we've given every cop a Gatling gun, um, yeah. and we have made all crimes punishable by death, and we've spent $50 million on a bridge that shoogled over in one direction. Yes. <laughs> yeah, if you, it, you will be checked for, uh, for credits. Uh, your credit score <laughs> you will, will be, be checked before you get on the bridge. To make sure that you're not in possession of anything other than uh, Coca-Cola, the official beverage of yes, and the if 1992 you are, you Olympics. Yes, you will be shocked. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, wasn't it in, in, in Rio, uh, on the sort of main drive into the Olympic Village from the airport, they put up huge curtains on the side of the highway, mm-hmm. so you couldn't see any of the neighborhoods. The favelas, so they, they did a bunch oh of like God. favela clearances, <laughs> just fully like uh, militarized invasions of these, of these slums, so yeah. Again, you gotta you got kind of respect that like we're aware of the social problems, and we've decided that a giant piece of canvas fabric is going to solve it for that's us. That's right. Out of sight, out of mind. That's Exactly. You know. <laughs> He's technocrat. The Olympics are really kind of a mask-off thing for capital, which I appreciate. <laughs> I always like to die in London where they gave dedicated lanes to Olympic the officials. The zip lanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forgot they did that. Holy shit. <laughs> so, one of the projects they wanted is this relatively modest bridge over a railway, right? Um, but they want some, you know, pizzazz to it, right? Uh, so they hire this uh, upstart structural engineer, Santiago Calatrava, to make it happen, right? This is built in 1987. It's one of his first uh, structures. And we can already sort of see some of Calatrava's uh, proclivities coming out here, right? Um, so I think, I think maybe some of the things which are pretty common here, you know, he's got non-standard structural shapes, 
uh, which are difficult to manufacture. Uh, he built stuff out of the inscrutable white material. You um, called this renderite, <laughs> right? Yeah, ren- renderite. Yeah, <laughs> renderite. <laughs> It's just like a SketchUp thing before you put the bricks on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then, uh, I, I, and I then... love I love a building with, with which is just texture missing, <laughs> <laughs> and of course lack of accessibility. You can see these big staircases along the uh, oh the, boy the, the the bridge piers here, right? But um, I think one of, one of Calatrava's big things that I think makes him go for budget is you know using renderite, right? Um, <laughs> I th- I think. You know, so what? One of the things I think you do as an architect, which I think is important, is that you're supposed to be able to build the buildings, right? No, that's for pussies. I think I think building buildings <laughs> is a big part of architecture. Um, you would think. You know, not just designing them; you have to like build them as well, right? Uh, so, so like in concept architecture, a lot of times you see like sort of, um, you know, the buildings are made of white, you know. Which is apparently a material that can do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, right, shown here. This is something <laughs> I, I ripped from Design Boom, right? Um, you know, and this is sort of in contrast to like boring old structural materials that have properties and limitations to what you can do with them. And then you need like guys to build them, like this guy who's doing something with the wood. And this guy who's pouring concrete, right? <laughs> Whereas the render ice is just beautifully extruded in these weird, cool shapes. I, I, in, mm-hmm. Extruded uh, implies that there's some sort of manufacturing process, though. I believe these mm. just appear out of thin air. <laughs> <laughs> it's a structures PhD thing, I think. Actually, we don't we don't have access to this sort of stuff. But <laughs> you gotta go get your doctor. It's for that like Scientology. Call. A structural engineering department <laughs> is a lot like Scientology. Santiago Calatrava is able to do this because of how few thetans he has. He can manipulate matter with his mind. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. No, I agree. So he's rotating the cube around in his mind and turning it into. <laughs> More turning it into. A... It up, I am pretty jealous. <laughs> now, all I have to do is pay 90000 goddamn dollars. And soon Liam will have, uh, what is it, telekinesis? Yeah. <laughs> nice. The, the, the buildings are actually made of uh, condensed body thetans. Oh, <laughs> that, well, having to scoot those must be kind of expensive. Um, but yeah, I mean, manufacturability is a big part of putting up uh, buildings, especially uncon- uh, like uh, uh, unconventional ones, right? And Santiago is, you know, he's a structural engineer, so he should know all about these things, but he's decided he wants nothing to do with them, right? Um, so, you know, he's, he's big on the inscrutable white material, the renderite, you know, just done in arbitrary shapes. So actually, if you go back to this bridge here, you can see what this looks like is there's the, the bridge, the bridge, uh, the big arch member here, this seems to be some kind of triangular arrangement with like three tubes and then like a plate in between them, right? Which, which is not something that you can just go to a, a steelworks and say, yeah, give me a lot of that. Um, <laughs> I mean, all things considered, considering what he, what he does later on, this is one of the easier things to manufacture, I think, that he's put in the specs. But uh, yeah, this is positively sedate compared to when he actually starts enclosing. Uh, spaces, yeah. building buildings. <laughs> well, I just love how it looks like engineering. It's not actually engineering, but it just looks like there's. Engineering it looks like going engineering, on. yeah. Right. Well, I'm not sure. Like there, there's one arch which is straight up and down. And there's another arch which is leaning against that arch, and I just wonder how much this arch, how much work is this leaning arch actually doing? Because <laughs> this main one seems to be holding up the road deck, and it's it, it looks to me like it's a tide arch based on this big member down here. I don't know what the outside one is doing other than holding up the pedestrian deck, which I assume is much lighter. Um, but, like, what do I know? Uh, <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, since he insists on these weird shapes, of course, that means, you know, everything he does goes over budget and it ruins his career, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, Calatrava wins a whole bunch of awards for his first bridge. It gives him a bunch of recognition. Starts landing more clients, all of whom are governments, right? They right. want some yeah, kind guys, of big statement bridge or building. Yeah, the guys who run the money printers. Mm-hmm. 
Because they want to feel special. Yeah. And everyone just doesn't everyone deserve to feel a little special? Don't yeah. I deserve a four billion dollar subway system as a treat <laughs> after all I've done? <laughs> Don't I deserve to be able to point to something and not something inscrutable like uh, lowering poverty or something like that. But like, don't I be able? Don't don't I get to open something? Don't I get to cut the ribbon on something get, other than like I'm a kid Andrew who knows how to read? Cuomo. I'm Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, and I, and I get to cut a red ribbon on something, which I love doing. So, so he gets his big break a few years later with the Puente del Alamillo, right? That's this guy here. This is where he discovers his other thing, which is asymmetric cable stayed bridge with a leaning tower, right? Oh, um, it looks like a dog. It does look like a dog. <laughs> it does look like a penis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very it's large. A penis hop. It yes, it is a penis harp. Um so this is this is fun because it looks very, very elegant and so on and so forth. Very well, elegant penis. Whoop. Well, my favorite thing about this one is I was looking. A big selling point of it is that is that is at the same angle as the Pyramid of Giza, so mm -hmm. it's fifty eight degrees exactly for that arbitrary reason. Cool. Come on, man. <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's definitely something I associate with uh, Spain, which is where this is. Are the Great Pyramids? Hey, you want culture? You get culture. That's what, <laughs> that's how it is. Spin the culture wheel, folks. <laughs> well, it's like an obelisk at the same angle as the pyramids. Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> and make that connection. Wow, this that is, is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, th this is a, you know, so it's an asymmetric cable stayed bridge. Rather than having cable stays on the other side of the tower, anchoring it in place, uh, the sheer mass and the angle of the tower are what holds the bridge up, right? Um, and one of the results of this is that instead of it being very light and elegant, it is, in fact, extremely heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks so well, you light. Can tell from the materiality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can tell from the materiality as well. It, you know, it just screams like lift off, like yeah, a bird. A big, <laughs> yeah, it's a big concrete bird. Mm -hmm. Wonder if we'll see that sort of motif again as we go through <laughs> this work. Um, well, it's interesting because this thing is about ten times heavier than an equivalent um, cable stayed bridge in Rotterdam. With because it has because that one has backstays and this one does not. Mm. I mean, it's 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 elegant in quotes, um, but you know it's just a big fat tower, big fat dong. So the the architectural well, press loves this one, um, and 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 so he starts getting more and more commissions for bridges like this, which we'll go over a few in a minute. Um, he does eventually get better at this stuff, keeping things light. Uh, th this is in Jerusalem. Shapes. Yeah, shapes. 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 Bend. Bend. <laughs> <laughs> Intro to statistics textbook. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. <laughs> how this does is... this make us feel? Are you going to mm. ask us how it makes us feel? Uh, how, do how does it make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel like I'm about to study statistical mechanics. Yeah, is how it, makes say, feel. it makes me feel like I'm going to be crying in... Uh, in, in, in Paley for about six hours. <laughs> uh, that said, it also makes me think of bending, and that I associate with Futurama, so it makes me happy. <laughs> wow, you really do, art really does make you feel something. <laughs> makes me feel good and proud to live in Jerusalem. Um, I can take a lot of civic pride because of this grid. A city you yeah. should take civic pride in, of course. Yeah. Right. It says so much about Jerusalem and about <laughs> Our societies and uh, about our ways of living, I think. <laughs> well, so, uh, piggybacking off of that, I just want to say I have more of a question than a like more <laughs> of a statement than a question. Uh, Ross sucks ass. Uh, next, oh, okay. <laughs> I was trying to do a college lecture thing, but I'm oh. old now. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, this is uh, this is a later bridge of his. This is the Chords Bridge in Jerusalem where Calatrava starts to perfect his extremely expensive, impractical, and barely balanced bridge uh, sort of type, right? I look like th I like that it looks like a cruise in USA uh, track, though. <laughs> kind of does, yeah. <laughs> so Maybe there's a little speed boost on the top right, you know, when you bank <laughs> at a certain angle, you really go for it. Mm. 
This looks Do- like if you download a, a SketchUp model of the Brooklyn Bridge and it's like about the same quality that all of them are, like the <laughs> SketchUp warehouse shit. D- Dr. Santiago Trackmania Calatrava. I was a Trackmania. That was the game I wanted. Thank you, Alice. <laughs> I don't know, so has the guy ever seen a, a bird or a stringed instrument <laughs> that he didn't immediately try and incorporate into a bridge? Ah. Uh, no. No, well he only does, he only does birds and harps. He really um, can't stop yeah. himself, actually. The bird harp. Exactly. The bird harp. The bird harp guy. He's got this large, slender, leaning tower holding up this bridge. Now this bridge is a small overpass for the Jerusalem light rail, right? It goes over one intersection, and it costs the city of Jerusalem seventy million dollars, <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> which was twice the amount budgeted. Um, Sucks to suck. So pretty I low guess. for That's Calatrava, tough. really. Yeah, it's pretty, actually pretty low for Calatrava. Yeah, yeah. and I. I guess if you're fleecing the Israeli state, that's not so bad, right? Uh, yeah, I thought that. Yeah. He was doing BDS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is Praxis, actually. <laughs> One of the things I, when I was looking at this thing, I was, I was just looking at it and like, how the hell did they build this? How the hell That's did they build real, this? Really. Well, you have I, a nice long piece of white stuff and you bend it. No. Uh, I, yeah, I guess that'll, so, that'll yeah, they just sort of, he, I, I guess, yeah, he just You've got to turn server gravity off shape. when you lower this thing into place, and <laughs> yes. then you freeze it, <laughs> put a bunch of welds on it, and then you turn the gravity back on. It's just extruded from it's Calatrava's mind, you know? <laughs> Calatrava is now, like, every time I look at a Calatrava design, I'm going to be hearing the Gary's mod sound effects, <laughs> and just <laughs> shit crashing into other shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so those are those are some of his bridges, but I uh, the big one, big one he does now are train stations, right? Uh, so I thought we'd start by asking, what is train station? <laughs> it's a mall. Where you, you've go. never <laughs> you've never managed to do an intro to any concept without going first. We must ask, what is concept? Yes, I do the Socratic method. Yeah, he actually gets annoyed at me in one of the episodes. Uh, because I read the notes ahead of time for once in my life, and then I answered the question. I think it was uh, King's Cross, <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, you read the notes. Thank you. I'm trying to employ the Socratic method." <laughs> yeah, Ross is yeah. Ross is Socratic Alenkus about what the qualities of a train station are and aren't. Yes. Slave, Slave boy, boy, we can agree that a train, train station <laughs> is somewhere that you catch a train. Is it not? <laughs> No, you. There's a pizzeria Uno there too. We must keep that yeah. sacred. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's like parts of a train station, right? You have the platform. Here's an example at Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Oh, that's that's sorry. Where the, wow, you yeah. really went for straight for the top when you know showing a platform. And oh yeah, thank you for that. Well, I figured we get the train station. It's most basic, you know. Um. The station in its nudest in its most naked form. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, I've had to use the station multiple times. I, so. I know. <laughs> that's a, that's a bus stop next to a train line. Is yeah, what it's that just is. a bus stop. With, it's just a bus shelter. You know, when the train stops there, you get on the train. That's the platform at its simplest, right? And then you know you have something called the concourse. If there's multiple platforms, and then it lets you get from one platform to another platform, right? And then there's a building next to the train station called the head house, right? And that's where everything is, right? So you've got a waiting room. Uh, you know, it can be something really simple, like this is the Wallingford station on SEPTA. It just has a waiting room. When it was built, the upstairs was an apartment for the station master. Right? Oh, that's sweet. It'd be nice to live in a little station apartment, but uh, yeah, no. At, at the far end of that, you've got a, a gigantic city thing where there's a bunch of like railroad cops uh, yeah. with submachine guns and shit. Yeah, like the far end is like old Penn Station. Here, it's got facilities for local long distance trains. It's got facilities for like handling baggage, mail, ex- express freight. You know, it's stuff it's like interior taxi stands. You know, there's like a a con- there's like multiple concourses with like shops and stuff. Uh, all the big terminals the game. on the East Coast had a giant main post office next door for mail trains. I kind of want to simulate a game where you build a train station. I know there is one, but like, I want a new one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and, and then even like, you know, major transfer stations, like this is 69th street. Uh, nice. It, yeah. Nice. Um, you know, this is just for transferring from the subway to some trolleys and the Norristown high speed line. This also has like a big head house with a waiting room with seating. Seating is very important in train stations. We're going to come back to that. Um, <laughs> You know, but a lot of these these big these train stations, you know, one of one of the things which holds them all together is, you know, the main purpose of them is to catch the train, right? A bit reductive. Yes. <laughs> the place for you to exist while you wait for train to be there. Yes. It's a liminal space. <laughs> it, is, it is a liminal space, yeah. <laughs> and because we because we live in capitalism, it is therefore also a place to have money extracted from you while you wait for train to be there. Yes. Yeah, we're going to we're going to we're going to get to that. Um now one of the things about Calatrava's career is that in his early in the early part of his career he actually did some good stuff. Um so here's <laughs> Now we got to go to somewhere that doesn't know anywhere about extracting money from mm-hmm. you while you're waiting for stuff. Zurich. Yeah, yeah Zurich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh the Stadelhofen uh railway station in Zurich. Um and I think this Calatrava was pretty pretty good at this in his early years. They were expanding the station for a third track. So what he did was he put this roof over the third track that was built in a hillside, and then there's sort of some green space above it, so it doesn't like alter the hillside too much. Um, I kind of like I kind of like the architectural treatment of like the catenary poles and like you know the standardized signage which has that curvy thing on top. I think that's nice. This one came mm, in under like, budget too. De- developing his architectural vocabulary of three things, having yes. that, kind of L- <laughs> that L-shaped bracket, the the ribs, and yeah. a like sort of you know curvy. But he has I respect it. that he kept it to rail phone this time though, and so they were able to make you know like twenty of his little L-shaped bracket as opposed to three hundred slightly different ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and he, um, uh, I, I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, he hadn't figured out uh, how to paint everything white yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, compared to the path station at, at the Oculus, this is a vastly, like, he, he seems to actually give a shit that you might be sitting there on the platform for longer than, like, 30 seconds. Mm. Yeah. As far as experiential. It's nice. Goes. I kind of yeah. like it. It does have All some right. issues with accessibility, though, because, of oh. course, it's in Europe and they don't care about wheelchair users. Right. Um, <laughs> At least they're honest about it, I suppose. Mm-hmm. This is true, yeah. <laughs> uh, accessibility is another theme in Calatrava's work. Oh, uh, or that he's really thereof. good at it? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was going to be there. It's just, you know, budget cuts. It, it, just, it was the first thing to go. I spent all yeah. of my wheelchair ramp money on 500 variations okay, of this bracket. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the white material is. That's why it's yeah. so expensive. It's, it's harder than cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you might need it, folks. <laughs> So this was built sometime in the early '90s. Another one he does in that same era is the main oh, that's railroad Lutzern. station. Yeah, Lucerne. Yeah. Oh God, that, that that's not a pretty city, which it's, is uh, funny for Switzerland, <laughs> but uh, just in general. So it, th- this did not add much to it. I was about to say I've been here. All I can say is for a a main concourse made entirely of glass. It's incredibly grimy and dingy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which I think is kind of a theme with glass train stations. Yep. Uh, yeah. I don't know, there's something about Lucerne in general, man, it just kind of sucks the color out of stuff, generally. Yeah, it is kind mm-hmm. of, I, like, I like the nice wooden bridge there, that's, that's mm. cool. The, the little, like, lion memorial, that's cool. But... Yeah, it is cool. Sorry, we're just reminiscing about times we have been to Switzerland here. Yes. Come to the Switzerland mm-hmm. episode. Well, there's your problem with <laughs> Switzerland. Well, there's your problem goes to Switzerland. Please still. give us our gold back. <laughs> <laughs> I need it for stuff. I don't, I don't have anything to say about this except it's, you know, dingy. I um, like the spoiler in case the train station needs to take off. I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, force, that, man. You yeah, can never have too much of force. it. It, it, it reminds me of Washington Dulles. Mm. In yep. that respect. Yep. Yeah. 
I don't yeah, know. I I, maybe maybe this this is before his bird stage and in his airplane stage. Yeah, it doesn't look like a harp, and it doesn't look like a bird. Yeah, uh, surprising. He's done a few train stations since this, other than the main one we're going to talk about, um, all of which have the same theme, which is big open air concourse with glass roof, with many opportunities for leaks. Uh, if it worked for the Victorians, there has been no <laughs> like no need to go no any further to since it. then. We can That's stop. right. But uh, 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 yeah, this is kind of it's kind of fun because these are all like exposed to the elements. So there's lots of expansion and contraction, you know, which is not great for skylights. No, you got a it's single. Something he's famously good at just a single general. beautiful <laughs> yeah. pane of perfect glass dropped on your fucking head from fifty feet up. <laughs> what a beautiful way to go. <laughs> just flattened by like a yeah. giant yeah <laughs> annihilated by a two inch thick pane of glass oh uh, uh, you know six centimeters I don't know whatever yeah. it is it's, it's Europe so it's metric yeah yeah <laughs> I, I don't try, I try not to think about that stuff you know? <laughs> it's against the lord <laughs> it is I exactly agree so you know this is yeah, this one's up here in Lisbon this one is in Liege in Belgium down here. This is the airport station in Lyon. I don't know anything about these except they look expensive. All um, I can all I can apply here is the the same test as the Victorian concourses like this, which is leave them for a hundred years, run a bunch of steam trains through them, and like <laughs> wait for them to become a rich ecology of uh, stuff that eats certain pigeons. Oh yeah, the carbon will actually solidify on the panes and act as a secondary structure. Yeah, seal. once <laughs> once point, you get yeah. to the point where where sunlight does not penetrate these, they'll probably be great. <laughs> it's like when paint dries at the bottom of the cup, and you can like pull it out. Yeah. It's the, the exact form of the cup. Yeah, where the entire structure decays and rusts into nothing, and the soot is the only thing holding it up. <laughs> that's just beautiful. That, yeah, that's just beautiful. we gotta we gotta start neglecting more Calatrava buildings, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get some ruin value going. Come I have on. never, never once uh, done maintenance on a Calatrava building personally. <laughs> oh, they you look know, like a pain in the Vanguard. ass. You know whose buildings I have done maintenance on is Michael Graves. Uh, oh, <laughs> hey. sorry. Yeah. No, actually, we had, we had trouble during the facade report on the Michael Graves building because it was seventeen years old and there was nothing wrong with it. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right like, imagine having to some... clean this shit. Yeah. Any of it. <laughs> he should do like the real architecting where he designs the actual like maintenance, like their their sort of uniforms, the special lift that will mm. allow them to get up into the and clean it and everything like that. A brush that corresponds perfectly to the joints and ceiling. Oh yeah, that that'll That's let, the next step. That'll make things much easier. It's a total <laughs> lifestyle design. Yeah. You know? The Gesamtkunstwerk. <laughs> all, all, all of these guys really do want their buildings to be occupied by and travelled through by and maintained by monks, right? Yes. Yeah. Just a kind of sort of wandering architecture monk who's gonna like have no needs, be totally ascetic. And it's just but here then to also to the buildings, yes. But yeah, but like also appreciate all of your vision. Their architecture yeah. Ronin. <laughs> <laughs> like I have, I have no needs. I have no desires. I am, I am totally on the the eightfold path. Other than I like seeing the curvy shapes because they make my brain yeah. do pleasant things. It reminds me of nature, and I don't see that sort of thing enough. Instead of looking at a bird, I'd rather look at the underside of a terminal and be reminded of a bird. I yes. feel like all of the guys like this in the Middle Ages who wanted to design cathedrals, when they started getting like this, were simply thrown from a belfry by their colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to be like a, you want you want the belfry. building to be like a bird? You here. want to be like a bird? Let's see how you make <laughs> like a bird. <laughs> 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 it's actually what the original that's what that's what Freemasonry was originally about was murdering your stark attacked colleagues. <laughs> Wait, I should I, they still do that? Should I get in on that? I'll get in on that. I think the Masons do anything interesting anymore. No. no. Yeah. It's, just, it's just like a charitable organization now. Yeah, that's like, boring. Yeah, that. exactly, right. Where's the shadow government when you need it? 
It's us now. Mm. Do you need anything? <laughs> uh, how's the how's the Jewish space laser going? It's in the shop. Oh. <laughs> it's always um, in the fucking shop. <laughs> now this is where we get into uh, his other trick with buildings. Um, famously, so uh, with the Milwaukee Museum of Art. Right? Did you say sploosh? I said swoosh. He's <laughs> doing the fucking bird thing. <laughs> That's right. He does the fucking bird thing. Yeah. You can see this oh, as the regular bird thing. Yeah. Um, the Milwaukee Museum of Art. Uh, he designed in uh, I forget when two thousand some maybe late ninety something. I don't know. The idea is these big wings on the building. They fold down as a sunshade when necessary. Right, very awesome. useful. Like Insane. a bird. Ah, yeah. Is he, he also did an <laughs> offset cable stayed bridge as the entrance? Just I see that. Yeah. Just to, yeah, just really. That, you know, because he point again home, right? he does two things. <laughs> um, so you know this this museum came in I think at least relatively on time and on budget, which gives Calatrava inspiration to do this on every single building he designs from here on out. Right. Mm -hmm. um, which leads us to the big kahuna. The World oh Trade Center Transportation Hub. Here we go. The second worst thing to happen to the World Trade Center. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like the Air Force Academy Chapel. Except mm. more expensive and worse. Mm. Yeah. Uh, in infused with more religious fundamentalism, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, in 2001, Bush did 9-11, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And as a consequence of 9-11, the towers fell down and crushed the PATH station, the Port Authority Trans-Hudson Railroad, right? So New York City needed to build a new PATH station, right? Uh, and Santiago Calatrava comes to the rescue. Like all of the all of the World Trade Center rebuild was absolute star fucker shit. Uh, yes. I mean, <laughs> at some point we'll have to get into the Freedom Tower as well. But oh yeah, and the memorial uh, in and of itself. I mm, yes, yeah. it's such a miserable place to be for for all those reasons that you just listed. But I've never seen so many bollards in one place in my entire yeah, life. Yeah, because they don't want anyone to car bomb their oh, beautiful yeah. Yeah. commercial temple. <laughs> right. Yes. I, I mean, yeah, it's um, uh, this this had to go through a number of redesigns just for security reasons, but also because Calatrava's design was stupid. Um, <laughs> we've we've also at some point got to talk about security architecture in general because Calatrava's not immune to it, but like all of this shit that requires you to have the setback and that requires you to have the ballards and yeah. so on and so on and so on. This is. Well, this one actually, like, half of the ribs are there just because Bloomberg thought it needed blast resistance. Like, this is not a joke. He put it through, yeah. like, review of the NYPD, and they said, no, there's not enough ribs Some on it. Some fucking fat Staten Island cop looks yeah. at it and goes, uh, maybe you gotta, like, double the columns. I want it to look like the inside of a deer carcass. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't understand, like, how that adds uh, blast resistance when in between the ribs is glass. You, you, so no, it's because the NYPD. Rods, it's just for special effects. It, it's because <laughs> the NYPD hate and fear the FDNY and want them to get as much concrete rained on their heads <laughs> as possible. Yeah, it's part of the long-standing feud. You know, once you understand that, it all snaps into place. So they start out. This building starts out budgeted for two billion dollars, which is already too much, right? Um, and then. You know, two billion dollars in two thousand four when they they budgeted this, that would be like the cost of building the subway line, like not just one station, like a whole line, right? And over the course of the construction of this project, the cost balloons up to four billion dollars, right? Hmm. For quite a number of reasons, um, which we'll get into here. Um, so. One of the problems is, of course, Calatrava always wants these impossible to manufacture structural shapes, which he creates by, you know, rotating a cube in his mind. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, I've so done. I've done brain magic to my L-shaped bracket again, yeah. and what I've come up with here is this fucking cathedral. All these ribs are a different size. Every cool. single one of them. 
Cool. Right? They're awesome. all supposed to be manufactured to be completely seamless. Cool. Which I'm sure the they structural yeah. manufacturer yeah, is really happy about. Um, he wound up having to cut a bunch of his features, you know, so there were supposed to be giant wings that moved as a sunshade. Those wound up being <laughs> static, right? <laughs> Again, they doubled the amount of ribs on account of security reasons. Um, Making it look more like fucking a view down uh, a a corridor in Alcatraz. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There was some drama over the one train, right? So behind the camera in this image is the Mm -hmm. one train and the World Mm -hmm. Trade Center Cortland Street Station, right? Um, and Calatrava was very insistent during the design process that this station was to be supported without columns, right? Why? There be no columns interrupting <laughs> the view towards the path concourse, right? Why? Because... Can I, can I just say really quick that the view across the, the concourse <laughs> to the, where the path is is now interrupted by those weird little kiosks you get in malls that sell like, yes. candles or potpourri. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. So, that's a way better use of space. <laughs> yes. It's amazing. Uh, so this meant, and the MTA wanted to keep the one train open at all times. They were reconstructing the station at the same time because it had also had the World Trade Center fall on it, right? So this meant the whole building was delayed for several years owing to a very expensive and slow process of underpinning and installing massive beams underneath that particular sub pair of subway platforms. Um, the, 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 the port authority kept trying to uh, convince Calatrava to put a column there. Cause it'd be much, much easier. And he just said, if you put a column there, I'm leaving the project. Um, which I think would have been a good thing. Artists are the or architects are for the fucking worst, man. Mm, yes, it's it's insane how yeah they're all fucking like that. And they all think that's a virtue. Also, <laughs> oh. well, let's was, let's see you build a place for a train to stop without my fucking genius. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the temporary station that was already there, the temporary path station was built for like like an eighth of the amount. Functioned perfectly fine, did all all of that, and then there's so like, I know at one point I remember they like flew uh, Port Authority guys up to Milwaukee to see the opening roof and stuff like that, thinking they were going to cut it out, and they're and basically they ended up being like, God damn it, Santiago, like it's too fucking cool, we got to keep the <laughs> opening roof, like, and so like it's just all over the fucking map, you know, uh, it it's infuriating. <laughs> It's just such an incredibly expensive project for for you know what what ultimately turns out to be you know kind of a mall, it's a mall, <laughs> and as as a subway station, it's not that busy, right? Like the the, no. the the vision for the sort of World Trade Center campus was it was going to be like the new heart of Manhattan, right? <laughs> Mm-hmm. And it, it just kind of has not been for many reasons, including the fact that it took 25 years to build a series of malls <laughs> yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, this did not and, like, if you, until, if you like, take two steps yeah. there, then, like, the yeah. NYPD kill you with a sniper rifle because you look yeah. too poor. <laughs> on any given day, I see more people sitting outside, sitting up against the building, trying to eat lunch, than I do actually inside the, the concourse. The other... And, it's horrible outside too. Yeah. It's extremely inhospitable, but even so, it's better than being inside. This is true. Another thing which is interesting is I used to think this was supposed to be some kind of grand entrance. I guess it isn't because you can see up here there's just like three, six <laughs> doors. And then, of course, in again, another accessibility theme, there's this complex staircase to get yeah, down to train yourself level. yourself down it. <laughs> yeah. Just take the brakes off the wheelchair and just fucking let it ride and uh, send the bill to the city of New York. There's this big platform here for taking Instagrams, though. Oh, cool. Um, okay. Yeah. That's, all we, that's all I need. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> um, another I, another, another thing about the, the entrance is the actual doors in. Like, you're totally right. There's that platform, like, down, like, a split level or whatever. 
But the actual entrance is the most underwhelming, unassuming, like unenthusiastic entrance I've ever seen. It's just like yeah. a few little shitty aluminum doors. And mm-hmm. that's that's it. It's like a little a vestibule. I, I've seen sheds with more dramatic entryways. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I I guess it's supposed to be for people transferring. Of course, the main action of the station is the path concourse, which is not underneath the Oculus. And then Fulton Street Transportation Center, which is where the subway is. And that was, you know, completed on time and under budget. And then they just sort of waited for this to be finished for another, I don't know, 10 years or some crap. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And this whole thing is, again, it's a big mall, right? Now, I'm going to say if I'm transferring from one train to another, Right. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'd be useful to have a few stores, right? Maybe I want a Dunkin' Donuts, right? So I can pick up some food in the morning. Maybe I want like a place to get a, a sandwich um, place, a beer sandwich place. place sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe, a, maybe a little beer store. I can pick up some beer for the way home. Some way you right? can get like a magazine or something. Sure. Phone Basically dies. what they have in beautiful Wilmington, Delaware at <laughs> Diamond Joe Biden station. <laughs> or even 30th. Like. The Westfield shops, as they call it, seems to oh, cater Christ. to a different kind of customer, right? The shops at Westfield. Yeah. So I can go to, I can, on the way home from work, I can stop at the Hugo Boss store. Yeah, right? for when you oh, want you to can... get your fucking Nazi yeah, uniform. uniform. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, can get your, I can go to London Jewelers. I can go, go to London Jewelers. I kind of like the idea of a jeweler, just in case, like, you really fucked up. I forgot to get your wife oh, or shit. significant oh, other fuck. a present. Uh, I gotta go to the jewelry store in the train station. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to the the fucking Breitling store and get a two thousand dollar watch. A full quarter of the retail space on two floors of the Oculus is an Apple store. Of course, well, works with them at Grand there's Central. Fucking, there's a Kate Spade. Oh, that's there's cool. There's a Kate Spade. Yeah. I, I, okay, I, I, handbag store. I also understand genuinely. Yeah, because I, 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 I to handbags. It's also not the most expensive handbags you can get, right? So that's no, but they're, surprisingly they're, they're middling. They're there. Yeah, like, but like... Your, the thought is if you're working in Midtown or Lower Manhattan, you could probably afford a Kate Spade bag as an impulse uh, purchase. Mm. Yeah, I guess so. Like, I'm not saying that's a correct it, thought, people. No, I'm yeah. just saying. You're talking, about, like, you're talking about a handbag that's a sizable proportion of my rent, right? But at the right. same time... Uh, is less grotesque than the Hugo Boss, I think. <laughs> but there's not there's not even like a, a Starbucks in the Oculus, you know, pick there's up a, a coffee. Is there or a Dunkin' something. Donuts? There's no there's a Dunkin' Donuts somewhere else in it's the uh, all luxury goods stores. And it was really but, funny yeah. is that like all of these luxury good brands are almost certainly owned by the same company because luxury goods are largely the preserve of yeah of lvmh and a couple of others but like hedge funds will just like accumulate them into into portfolios like that (laughs) wait is there a mont blanc one am i gonna buy a fucking fountain pen and a train station you never know you need a fountain pen (laughs) i'm unironically defending the mall (laughs) 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 okay but the casper store the casper store are you buying a mattress in the is there a casper store there's a casper yes Yes. it's like their showroom it's the mattress showroom i withdraw my uh my praises of the mall you could probably bring like a twin mattress on path. It would be sick to buy one though, right? And just take it on path and get home. Like mm-hmm. yeah. that's innovative use of uh of public transportation. Is there an UGG store? In case you forget your shoes. Yeah, there's, there's Their slippers are good. Yeah. Oh wow. I actually don't own UGG slippers. I'm an LL Bean man, but my friend Derek owns UGG slippers. He never fucking shuts up about them. So. <laughs> <laughs> this town's really been going downhill since they shut down yeah. since GM shut down the donut plant. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, this is supposed to be like a grand public space, and it's like, well, who's this grand public space for? People with money, Roz, that's people. what all of Manhattan is now. It's a playground for rich white people, Roz. And then the actual trains are shoved into a corner, right? The then, if, even the rich white here. people it's a playground for don't seem to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't hear me disputing that. They, they, they don't <laughs> seem to like it. They seem to like more authenticity and which yeah whatever oh they should have just shoved it full of bodegas yeah yeah no they (laughs) want the opportunity to push over a nice mexican grandmother 
on the yeah. way to buy, I don't know, an orange at the farmer's market. Because they, li- they like <laughs> to jerk themselves off about living in New York and how tough it makes them and like it being greasy and shit. You're disgusting <laughs> and uh, the islanders suck. Like, yeah, I saw a rat once, so oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. it's like I'm poor. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I love I love to put on the uh, the trappings of poverty in my twenty nine hundred a month two bedroom apartment overlooking the Hudson. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's a it's a living. Yeah, mm. you do what you part, do. Of, part of that is part of that aesthetic is you don't go to um, glove works. <laughs> at the Westfield what shop. Glove works what with is an X. Works? I've never even heard it's of it. It works for gloves, man. I, ah. it's, I think it must be like a, a build a bear workshop, but for gloves. That actually would be pretty tight. If I could get like any glove I wanted. <laughs> now I'm going to go to Glove Works. To- no, we're wrong. Glove Works is a state of the art boxing studio and athletic you- performance oh, facility oh, come that on, combines man. boxing training what with state strength. Of the art it's do you need to be stuff? <laughs> it's CrossFit People stuff. People have been punching each other for thousands of years. There's no technological improvements. Now, there. I mean, I'm going to look at the membership options here, and who oh boy, yeah, you can't afford it. How much is it? <laughs> you can't afford it. I, I might be able to. No, Money bags, no, Jew over no. here. Tell me how much it is, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> well, anti-Semitism, <I'm>... Alice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me see. Are you, are you booking like a one-on-one session? Yeah, I want to book a one-on-one session for my wife. Oh, it, it makes me want to fucking give them my email. I'm not giving you my email. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> we'll never know how much it takes for my how wife much it costs to punch like, me for in the glove face. work. <laughs> glove works prices. Uh, hundred sixty nine dollars for <laughs> for eight sessions per yeah, month. That's not that bad. I guess that's not that. It's bad. like thirty dollars a class. That's not that's not crazy. I All right, so think. we've done a fair evaluation Although, of glove again, work. Just, yeah, yeah, sure. Like you can find your friend and spar with them. Like I guarantee you've got at least one friend willing to punch you in the face. Imagine Which going to the gym the at your subway transfer. That's the only thing the Oculus is really hmm. good for, though, is like sparring because there's lots of open space because there's no seating. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, Ross, seating is for pores. <laughs> also we can, true. We can go lay down in the Casper store. Yeah. Mm. There you go. I feel like it's sort of like the prototype for Moynihan Station, also with no seating, unless you're in the Acela Lounge. <laughs> oh, they yes. jack the prices up for this one. The one in the Oculus is like forty-five bucks a session. Oh, oh fuck you, God. man. <laughs> so this is this is location, location, location. You know, this is Calatrava's grand public space, uh, complete with boxing gym. <laughs> um, <laughs> why? 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 Suffer for other people's art, Alice. Uh huh. Now he's he's gone on. He's gone on to bigger and better things, though. Oh boy. This is the city of arts and sciences in Valencia. He went back to his hometown. Uh, the prodigal son returns to yes. shit all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so I, a lot of the information on this was in Spanish, so I, I didn't uh, I didn't quite get everything that's yeah, going no, on here. No one speaks okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it's a big it's a big cultural center type thingy, right? It's built on the bed of the rerouted River Turia, right? Um Calatrava was buddies with high ranking Valencian government officials and convinced them they needed that sort of thing, and then he would build it for them, right? Genius. That yeah. is that is absolutely brilliant. That's part of being a architect is you make your own commissions. Honestly, yeah. cool. why, why is there no option? Why is there no mod for cities skylines where <laughs> it get, it places one of these on the map for you, and you simply have to deal with the fact that you have been <laughs> given you don't have to pay for it, but you have had this thing, this mega project dropped on your fucking lap. <laughs> now you have to build this. Yeah, no, it's it's like a national priority or whatever. You have this thing; it's fine. It's like there's a whole bunch of things going on here. It's like I think this thing is like a science museum. I don't know what this is. This is like a sculpture garden on top of a parking garage. Cool. There's an opera house back here. What? Yeah, it's all in like this this big like pool. Like Where's the box? It's a twenty eight in one public yeah. use uh, <laughs> d- development. <laughs> it's like uh, one it, of those like t- city halls you get in like really tiny towns where it's like we have a conference center, we have mm. a like 
you your know, game wing station, yeah. your liquor yeah. store. Yeah. 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 But with like the, the two, they have too much civic pride, but it's for something pathetic. <laughs> so it'll be like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, well, the gateway to the Poconos, right? Or it's, yeah. uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the friendliest little city in <laughs> right. Luton County. And or a mural whatever. made by somebody who should not have ever painted anything. No. No. The Deconstructivist yeah. no. Art Museum in Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Valencia is a little bigger, but not that much bigger. Um, the, the whole complex is still unfinished. Um, it's come in at one billion euros so far, which is four times its budget. Yeah. Um, had some structural engineer issues from the build from the beginning. Um, it's the big opera house. Um, the roof came off during a storm. Now you don't want that. Yeah, that's not good. They had to cancel a whole bunch on. of perfor- performances. Um, there's one building back here behind the, again, asymmetric Cable State Bridge because he does two things, and that's <laughs> one of them. Um, this this uh, opera house back here, um, it, it's partially abandoned already, having never been finished. Okay. Um, nice. they, they fabricated a whole bunch of, you know, custom roof, piece, roof pieces, you know, same sort of shit. You know, it opens up like a bird, right? They fabricated all those pieces and then dumped them in a vacant lot next to the project, and they never installed them. Um, nice. Yeah, so those have been, a bunch of those got looted by scrap dealers, apparently. Um, hey, at least somebody got something out of it. I was about really? to say, yes. This is not the worst day you can have as a scrap dealer. Yeah. <laughs> and go back to the Guyana episode. <laughs> Uh, well, it turns out that uh, the, the, the Calatrava mined material is actually highly radioactive. No one knows that. <laughs> <laughs> um, way back in the first slide, we showed Calatrava looking at all of those tall buildings, right? Those are a pair of skyscrapers, a couple skyscrapers that were supposed to be built back here, right? Which is where the vacant lot is, where all the building pieces are right now. Um, those are not built, but Calatrava was paid 15 million euro to design them. Hell and yeah. apparently his architecture studio somehow is now in a situation where they own that land. <laughs> so they stand to benefit if they are constructed. This um, dude's a fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that absolutely sincerely. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. about architecture. Yeah, but about no. apparently just as a like grifting people out of their money. He <laughs> makes so the deal. much fucking Very money. Yeah. Gifted monorail salesman. <laughs> well, he li- he has like he he's he's rich enough that he owns a townhouse on Park Avenue. Like I didn't know there were townhouses on Park Avenue. <laughs> yeah, there's two, and he owns one of them. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't the other one Jeffrey Epstein's? Yes, it no. was. It used to be a school. There was. Hmm. <laughs> that that is that, hey, that is dead serious. Jeffrey Epstein's house, because I watched an episode of VH1's Life of the Rich and Fabulous once. We were talking about <laughs> hedge fund managers. Jeffrey Epstein bought a Manhattan schoolhouse and turned it into an actual house. That is 100% true. Good <laughs> lord. Well, Calatrava actually owns two townhouses on Park Are Avenue. Are they glued ne- together? Yeah, they're next to each other. One Why is his house, two, the man? other is his office. Fuck off, man. You <laughs> can nice. buy with one. <laughs> When the dictatorship of the podcasters comes, we will be redistributing <laughs> the townhouses. We're gonna we're gonna expropriate Calatrava's office. Yes, I want I want a a a, a dude. Uh, what's it called? The Russian a, a vacation duplex. house. A dacha. Oh, a dacha. dacha. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. After the revolution, we will be podcasting, uh, performing our essential function of podcasting from the Park Avenue dacha. Yes. yes. <laughs> Hero of the American Union, uh, Alice Caldwell Cavalier, everyone. That's right. At yes. your service. It's us. We're podcasters. We're going to cause the revolution. Oh, we're not? Oh. <laughs> no, I want my dacha. Uh, so, yeah, that, the, the City of Arts and Sciences is still unfinished, still very much um, costing the Spanish taxpayers a lot of money. Um, but, you know, it's all worth it for that good Calatrava stuff brings a lot of civic prestige i imagine yeah Probably. apparently they don't actually get a lot of visitors to this thing <laughs> <laughs> i love to build empty malls i love to build yes. empty bird walls yeah I, I was doing research on this the other night 
And first of all, Calatrava is like the most fun architect to research because every single Wikipedia page has a controversy section that you can just scroll immediately down to <laughs> for any project. But there, for this one specifically, there's, there was like an opposition party leader who made a website called Calatrava Bleeds You Dry, which detailed all the failings <laughs> of the project and showed like how like over much it was and like detailed the failures and how everything was falling apart. And Calatrava sued him. And the judge uh, declared that actually the site was all correct, but it was just a little mean. <laughs> so they made him pay like some money because it was mean. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Well, aren't there, aren't it was there, a good podcast to while it lasted. Our, our boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, so. everything you said was true, but it's not about what you said, it's the way you said it. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> he said, I got the exact words, he said it was insulting and degrading. Ah. How dare you point out things which I did. <laughs> that hurt my feelings about them, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here, folks. Folks, if uh, Calatrava sues us over this, Except we're in America. We're immune. We don't have. Thank laws you, like Jesus. That. He's gonna yeah. stop over to my place. He doesn't live too far. <laughs> He's come over to Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> Shit. Fuck. He loves the Brooklyn Bridge. Thank you for your break your legs. Thank you for your sacrifice in <laughs> yeah, advance, that, there, bud. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for taking a fall for us. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, this is a slide I, I, I entitled Santiago Calatrava Doesn't Care About Wheelchair Users. The title. <laughs> yes. So this is another fun project of his, the, the Ponte della Constitucione. Oh, fuck off with this. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks like the Italian flag, kind of. Isn't that cool? I, uh, I, I don't see it. I see it. It's, it's, it's got some green, yeah, it's got some white, it's got some red. That's, oh. that's awesome. He's doing the thing. He's, he's being yeah. very witty. People love well, it when their architecture is witty. <laughs> so, um, it, it, this is the first bridge over the Venice Grand Canal in over 125 years. It connects the train station, which is on this side, to um, the cruise terminal, which is on this side, as well as some public transit and stuff like that. Uh, opened in 2008 with immediate major issues, right? Cool. Um, first right. off, it was budgeted at 4 million euros, and it came in at 15 million euros. All cool. said and done. <laughs> I'm not sure um, that's correct. You have 15 million euros over budget, which it, suggests it, to me that it was 19 million euros. Maybe 19 million euros. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that, that, that actually probably is right. Um, the walking surface is glass. Cool. Which turned out to be very slippery. Cool. And the idea is you could look down to the canal, and the people in the canal, I guess, can look up at you. Yeah, up you could piss off them. Yes. Yeah, don't wear a skirt <laughs> while crossing the bridge, I guess. Um, <laughs> Santiago Calatrava doesn't care about wheelchair users, comma, skirt wearers. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's steps. The whole bridge is steps. There's no provisions for wheelchair access. Uh, there were some. There was supposed to be some kind of lift on the bridge, but they had to scrap it because it went so over budget so early on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's inaccessible bridge with a glass surface that everyone slips on. They fall on their ass, what? and a lot of times it breaks the glass. Right. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, tourists spring wheeled luggage over the bridge, and those hit the glass when they go down the steps, and then that can also don't, break don't, it, right? Don't, 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 yes. don't, don't, Thank you for doing the sound effects. I like oh, that. yeah, but like <laughs> that, that times a couple of hundred thousand. And it's a Calatrava bridge, so every single step is a different shape and size. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Very, very, very. Each cool. individual part, each individual pane of glass has to be delivered from a fucking monastery in northern Italy where it is handmade by a 97 year old blind man. And when he dies, that's it. The bridge is condemned to ruin. I don't think I've ever heard you be so happy. I'm enjoying this a lot. I don't, you, you, this is the thing, right? As much as I hate uh, a lot of, for instance, brutalism, 
Rare is the architect who is this openly contemptuous towards the people <laughs> he expects to be using. <laughs> yeah, the thing. No, it does kind of roll to be honest with you. It's, you, you have, I haven't seen the likes of this shit since Le Corbusier, where he was just like <laughs> fully on, we're going to demolish French North Africa and make it a parking lot. <laughs> Well, and also pl another plus in Kala Travis mm. Corner is he clearly cares very much about the 97 year old monk. Like he's keeping him in business. That's right. You know? That's right. It's a jobs guarantee. Yeah. Universal basic income for yeah. Calatrava artisans. <laughs> I have a story about that actually happening. Of course um, you do. One of my coworkers worked on the restoration of Washington, D.C. Union Station back in the 80s. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the, one of the problems in the main concourse, it's got all these, you know, old fashioned coffers up there with like the egg and dart and everything, you know, one of them was so rotted out, they had to replace it. And so they wound up finding the 89 year old Italian man who designed them and built them in the first place and said, you got to come out of retirement for one last job. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he was fly fishing in Montana and they land the helicopter next yeah. to the creek. And so they got him fives drawn. <laughs> they got him uh, they they got him to build one last coffer so they could replace the rotted out one and they hoisted it into place and he was there watching and then they installed it and then he realized it was just like half a degree off, you know, rotation wise. And oh. he just started screaming and cursing. <laughs> <laughs> But it's still there. I believe you can still see it if you look closely. There's just one coffer that's slightly off. That's the last time a guy wasn't alienated from his labor. <laughs> the last time. <laughs> that's insane. So another thing with Calatrava, super genius structural engineer, um, is that the foundation was done wrong for... <laughs> Venetian soil, right? Well, it's, it's Venice. That no foundation works. The whole city's gonna matter. fucking yeah. sink in the wake of the next cruise ship that comes by. It's a doomed fucking yeah. city that we've killed. It's a bad so, yeah, idea all, in the Middle Ages. The it's a worse Kala, idea now. Right. All the renderite in the world isn't going to make the like three hundred year old wood piles stay in place. What do no, you, what do you it's, want? It, it's like built on a fucking plague lagoon, and every year the aqua <laughs> also gets a little bit worse because the sea level gets a little bit higher, and also we keep driving cruise ships with like fifty swimming pools and robot bartenders <laughs> past it, doing fucking donuts in the lagoon outside. <laughs> so, because of the foundation design being wrong, from the thrust of the arch, right pushing against the foundations, the ends of this bridge walk outward about two centimeters each year. But and they have to be constantly monitored. Venice is cool, so, though. I saw, I saw this documentary about yeah, the, Venetian, sweet, the Venetian emergency services, right? And being a firefighter in Venice is the closest you can get to living in Lego City, right? Because all of these guys, they just live in their fire station, right? And then when an alarm goes off, they run into the basement, hop onto a fire speedboat with a siren on it, and just go blazing out onto the fucking bridges. And I'm like, yeah, no, this is cool. This is, this is nice. It's a shame that uh, you, all of this is built on sort of dead surfs and um, <laughs> uh, rotting logs. I actually that exact same thing. This reminds me of a scene in the Italian Job. I've loved Venice ever since I saw the Italian Job, where they blow up safe like the third floor and it falls into a boat, and then they just drive the boat off. <laughs> That's fucking badass. It's like yeah. the same thing. Only in, yeah, you can you can now drive the boat underneath the pedestrian bridge. It'll collapse on, and you can drive away with it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, it is. I steal the bridge. Oh, it is astonishing to me how Sorry. badly you can screw up a pedestrian bridge. Like, well, that's what happens when you have contempt <laughs> for the people giving you lots of money. Yeah, which is this praxis? I think so. I think so. Contempt yeah. for the Italians. You yeah, know, also, like, kind a of proud cool. tradition of which yeah. I am happy to take part. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean you know I, you, you could replace this with like a a, a 50 dollars prefab structure no problem i bet um <laughs> but anyway well, you know it's nice to see venice venice's stature get raised a little bit more. <laughs> i was about to say yeah uh, there was I mean, nothing in venice worth design. seeing it's kind of yeah. Yeah. To put his mark on yeah it, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
it, those are the ones I was going to cover in depth. Obviously, there's much more in his portfolio of works. The fucking um, turning torso thing. Turning torso, which in one, one of the few one of the few projects he's built that didn't involve public money or like oodles of public money, at least to my knowledge. Yeah, it was like a bank or something, right? Yeah. No, no, no. I think this one's this one's in Sweden, right? Yeah, it's just like a housing yeah. cooperative. Oh, huh. Okay, so yeah. he did figure yeah. out how to bilk the public somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just the NPIC, not the government. <laughs> uh, whatever. He built a big museum in Rio de Janeiro. It's like the museum of the future, I think. Which I think oh, is an oxymoron. I thought he went to museums to see old so, shit. Also, ripping off Nehemiah there, which is very funny. It's like Calatrava does Nehemiah. Yeah. yeah. He, there's he built a couple bridges in Dallas for the Twisty. interstate. Yeah. Twisty. Well, this one is fun because it's this amazing epic scale bridge, which is about twenty feet off the ground. <laughs> not even, not even over like a navigation channel or anything. <laughs> it's over a pond. It is over a pond. He's got a another pair of these, which are actually just pedestrian bridges next to the interstate highway. Um, and those are like these enormous, like must be like a 150 foot high arch, you know, and, and that, that's supporting the pedestrian bridge only. The bridges next to it are conventional, like post and beam bridges. <laughs> that's, that's splendid. I yeah. love it. <laughs> and then what's the, um, the fucking, uh, cyberpunk alternate reality thing we've got here on the left. Well, good news. Yeah. Calatrava is going to Dubai. <laughs> oh, right on. You think this we can is... get Seamus Malakafsley back for another five-hour episode about this? No, I don't think he ever wants to see us again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Seamus. Yeah. So, uh, this is the Dubai Creek Tower. It's supposed to be the tallest building in the world when it's finished. Um, oh, okay. Notice it's so tall, the model pokes through the uh, ceiling rafters. <laughs> um <laughs> This was, they actually have the foundation poured for this thing, and then Dubai said they cancel it, they postponed the project due to COVID, right? Which mm. I assume means they've postponed the project due to money. Um, Where all the laborers died, or, you know, making the foundation. Un unfortunate, yeah. They, have, they, having yeah. some various financial problems in the Gulf <laughs> states at the moment. They did yeah. not, uh, they did not uh, really consider the worker burn rate properly. Yeah. <laughs> like everything else, Calatrava, that also went over budget. <laughs> Blood and money are both over yeah. on this project. Did yes. you, I, I'm surprised you don't have the Chicago one on here. Do you know about that? The oh, Chicago right. I should have put the Chicago Spire, yeah. which is just a hole in the ground. It's it, yeah, it's a hole in the ground. But yeah. what he wanted oh. was to have a perfect unicorn penis coming out of the what? coming out of the air, <laughs> like a mile high in um in the loop in Chicago. I'll put it in in post. Yeah, thank that, you. That it it looks got... like a unicorn penis or a fucked up baguette, depending on how 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 lowbrow your imagination is. <laughs> it's another one that got as far as the foundation and then gave up. Mm. Um, yeah, um, that's Santiago Calatrava. Bilking the public, then building white things. White <laughs> fucked up bird guitar things. Yes. That may also be dildos. That may also yeah. be dildos. Yeah. <laughs> He's got range. You got to give him that. Oh. I was about to say. Birds, yeah. harps, dildos. Oh. Yeah. Dongs. <laughs> um, when you get down to it, all architecture is dongs. That's true. Yeah. That is the truth. It's incredibly yeah. true. Various kinds of dongs. Oh, did you see Big has a new hole building that came out today? Oh, I saw oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah. He, he just keeps doing his thing, you know? Mm. That's, a, that's, a, that's, another, that's another type of building. The, of the rapid, rapidly emerging genres of buildings, including blocks stacked on top of each other, and buildings <laughs> with a hole in it, and unnecessary <laughs> cantilevers, um, putting wind turbines on top of buildings where you can't do maintenance on them. Um, I think safe to say architecture's future is bright. I I think we should just give up on architecture at this point. I, <laughs> I think it can't can't redeem it. I we agree. should just stop stop putting up buildings. Everyone live in yurts. The thing is, we got to start with the architects, the star <laughs> the star architects first, and work our way down. Yeah, just one by one by one. But a bunch of ISIS guys taking a hammer to falling water because it's innovation. <laughs> 
You don't have to take a hammer to that. You just stop working on it for a couple of months and it'll, it'll we'll take care of itself. It <laughs> All right. So architecture bad. Yes. Architecture bad. Well, we we have a we have a segment on this program called Safety Third. Shake hands for danger. Nailed it that time. I know. Didn't go like it, ten seconds early. We have a we have a submission today from a, a mystery person. We have no idea who it is. Yeah, we are not we we no no clue. No clue whatsoever. No, no. Um dear, well there's your problem. I... I'm a professional actress. And a few years ago, I was in a four, I was in a profit share production of William Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. Profit share productions tend to be a little scrappier than full-scale shows at mainstream theaters, so a lot of corners get cut, especially when it comes to safety. Our show was open air, and we toured around various outdoor theaters in the south of England until the fateful day came when until the fateful day we came to a venue on the banks of the Thames in central London. Could, <laughs> picture unrelated. Picture unrelated. Could be any could be any venue. Could yeah. be literally anything. <laughs> <laughs> call it call it the Dobe. The, the Doge Theater. Yeah. Yeah. Our director, who is also our lead actor and producer, and the owner of the company. Uh-huh. Good good combination. Yeah, Very, yeah. That's that's not gonna that's not gonna result in you know ego problems uh, <laughs> in the theater. Oh my god, that's full of the most humble people I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, had already alienated most of the cast with his dangerous and inappropriate behavior. Oh. During a previous performance, he almost took out another actor's eye with a sword. Well, that sounds metal. So I'm well, coming around on this guy. Yeah. Well, that's uh, it's say. called verisimilitude. <laughs> in the first scene of opening night, he slapped me on the ass on stage in front of a full house. Something that I made abundantly clear displeased me during the interval. Oh, well, that's not so good. Uh, it's not so good. He didn't react well since nobody had ever really stood up to him before. Hmm. You're telling me that this guy who was directing a Shakespeare production in central London and was also the lead actor of it and was also producing it and also owned the theatre company I was not used to people standing up to him. I could I could think of several places where it would have been a good idea for someone to tell him, "Listen, you're taking on too much work." <laughs> <laughs> it's not about you. Don't have to say no. You just have to get the same result as telling him no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a keen eye for dealing with rich people. There, I yeah. think. <laughs> Yeah, someone figure out how to say that to Calatrava. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, on the day in question, our fearless leader had failed to call ahead and book any changing rooms, so we had to take it in turns getting into costume in a closet under the stage. Uh. There was no water, no toilets, and it was the height of summer, so we braced ourselves for a difficult show. The stage oh, had a smell. Small, yeah. <laughs> Authentic the globe Shakespearean smelling about smell. as bad yeah. as it did for the original performances. <laughs> the stage had a small lighting rig uh, arc arching over it about 10 feet off the ground designed to hold the weight of a few very expensive lights and not much else. This will become important later. Yeah, the little fucking Hitman opportunity notification has yeah. just come up. Everything went smoothly until we reached a critical scene in which the lead role, Benedict, over here is three of his friends, including me, having a secret conversation. Our director was supposed to start the scene by coming out, monologuing a bit, see the three of us coming, and then hide where the audience could see him. Uh, the obvious choice would have been to hide in the audience itself, something he'd done before, and which people generally loved, because it's a comedy, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Instead, he chose to hide behind the rig and during the course of the scene, climb up onto it and shimmy along, oh, no. hanging, sloth-like, over the three of us. Oh no. I saw the venue manager leap out of his booth and run partway down the aisle before freezing in horror, as the rig bent and the very expensive lights wobbled, owing to the weight of a full-grown man hanging upside down ten feet above the three actors. Hell yeah. 
none of whom were insured, and one of whom was a frail old man. The shock of this pointlessly reckless decision caused the old man to forget his lines, resulting in me having to hastily cover for him, though by this point the audience was only watching the lighting rig. Still in character, we deftly edged over to another part of the stage, finished our lines, and got the hell out of there before the idiot half jumped and half fell down. <laughs> During the interval, our fearless leader mysteriously vanished just before the manager came backstage to chew us out. Yeah, hiding in the closet. <laughs> yeah. I later relayed his words more or less accurately to the director, adding a few choice expletives. He accused me of stifling his creative vision. Oh, Dr. Calatrava. I didn't know Calatrava <laughs> did theater productions. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say another word to him outside of a scene uh, until the end of the run. He's putting on another open-air Shakespeare tour this year and has not invited me back to my enormous relief. Good Lord. Sincerely, an actress. Yeah, I'm going to fucking bad. do the, the splinter cell thing of, like, <laughs> shimmying up to, like, oh, descend man, I a splinter fuck. cell. What yeah, me too. Too. <laughs> splinter cell game. But Jesus, though. I was about to say, I mean, you know, that uh, one thing about theaters is, like, there's all kinds of places where people shouldn't be. Mm. You know, all those also, other lighting rigs, all just that Just in terms of, like, industrial <laughs> relations... You really don't want to piss off the technical side of the theater because that's a lot of big dudes and yeah, they're like, all like they're all like knife guys too. They're all knife guys and they yeah. love showing <laughs> off their knives. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like this guy was lucky he was able to hide. Yeah. <laughs> Just getting flayed by the fucking stage director here. Yeah, it's uh it it it, it it's uh uh, folks, uh, when acting, uh, stick to the stage. Stick to the stage. Do not anger the people whose job it is to haul like sandbags up and down <laughs> lengths of rope all day, and like hoist incredibly expensive lights, which you're then going to dangle off of. Yeah. All right. Damn, we're almost finishing on time. Incredible. Um, yeah. All right, that was safety third. Safety third. Do you want the uh, drop again? Yeah, I, I, I forget. Do we do the drop at the end? I forget. I don't yes. remember. Okay, yes. yeah. Shake hands. Maybe not. I don't know. I, I don't, don't listen to this I podcast. I, I don't know. I don't listen to this <laughs> podcast what's a, either. What's a, what's a podcast? <laughs> yes. What's a Liam? Um, Who am I? Hmm. Who are you people? How did you get on my computer? <laughs> oh, crap. Hello, Alice. Yeah. Ah! Ah! All, right, all right. Um... Uh, our next episode's on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Disaster. Does anyone have any commercials before we go? Listen to Kill James Bond. Thank you. Uh, Listen to Trash Future. Ke Kevin, Michael, tell us about your, your, your things. Your shtick. Yeah, we actually do have something to plug. We have an upcoming uh, monthly stream on Twitch with, I think, another former guest, Kate Wagner, called Yay. Guest Strip, where we're going to make fun of buildings on Twitch. So... Check us out on Twitter. It's like at Guestcrit. Oh yeah, oh, I'm I'm excited for it. Yeah, you all should come on sometime. Oh, love that'd be to. fun. Yeah, we'd love that'd to do great. that. Love to make fun of buildings. Yes. Yeah, it's fun. Buildings were <laughs> interesting. Oh, interesting. And you, you, you make fun of buildings, and yet you live inside a building. Interesting. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> I'd live in an RV if they let me, Alice. <laughs> Is an RV a building? No. Leave me alone. I guess it's an RV attack. This is my private private domicile and I will not be harassed, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> what if you just you're the sovereign citizen but for zoning? Yeah, right. Oh god. <laughs> I don't play by your rules. <laughs> <laughs> Showing up to the zoning board meeting with a with a don't shred on me flag and just beating the uh beating the the, the, the board of zoning unconscious with it. I'll make my own <laughs> rules. <laughs> no permits, no masters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about zoning. I'm going to get in trouble. That's a good point. Yeah, you can't, Talk you about California say. housing policy. Yeah, no. No, 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 no housing policy. Housing was a mistake. Yeah. yeah. RVs okay. only. RVs and yurts. 
Yes, yeah. that's yes, that's what we must have. We must return. A yurt is a kind of RV because it's portable. <laughs> Bye, <laughs> everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> so long. Thanks.